the first few weeks in, I discovered that although I was seeing 30 people plan a visit, I was only seeing five or six show up. Okay, what can I do to drastically increase that? Before we were seeing about an 18 to 20% show up rate to now nearly double. Once someone plans a visit, I'm about 80% for sure they're gonna show up. So a church that was seeing about 150, 180 on a weekend is now well over 600. Today, I am sitting down with Pastor Ken Bennett, Pastor Ken Pastors Connect Plano. They've been working with the Church Candy for some time now, uh, and I'm super excited to dive into their process on what they're doing to follow up with families that plan a visit to their church. So quick overview, the way it works here at Church Candy, we will set up Instagram and Facebook ads for churches to get families to plan a visit to their Sunday service. Now, that's the first step, getting someone to plan a visit to a church's Sunday service. Well, then from there, we need to actually get them to show up on Sunday. So Pastor Ken, they have a really unique strategy. So let's just go ahead and dive in. Uh, tell us, like, what was your experience when you started working with Church Candy uh, what were you guys doing to follow up with the families that well, prior to connected? church candy, we were really uh, focused on people reaching people. Um, and uh, that was our strategy. Uh, but I couldn't guarantee that every weekend we'd see a new guest. Yeah. Um, and so I just got tired of being insulted with the words. I never knew you guys were here. You all are the best kept secret. I, I used to say, wow, you know, that's a great thing. Pat yourself on the back. <laughs> yeah. you're, you're, you're the thing, the best kept secret. And then at some point I decided I was tired of hearing those words. And so uh, prior to Church Candy, that's what we were doing. But after uh, working with Church Candy, really the first 30 days, we started seeing some results, but we also wanted to uh, put some systems in place because every organization rises and falls to the systems in which they have in place. And I recognize that. Uh, so I wasn't just interested in swelling as a church. I really wanted to grow uh, and then wanted the people uh, who were a part of the church to understand we care uh, about their well-being and their spiritual journey. So those systems were necessary for us to properly engage uh, so that no one, you know, mistakenly makes an exit uh, when they really need to be a part of the community. Yeah, so you guys got started with Church Candy, started to get some results in place, and then really saw, okay, we're seeing some new faces. Absolutely. This is great, yeah. but how can we even take it to the next level? Because, I mean, from your perspective, you were probably seeing tons and tons of families planning a visit, and you saw new faces. I did, I did. And you're like, okay, sweet, we got maybe a 10% <laughs> or 20% show rate. But like, what about the other 90 yes, or 80%? Yes. And that was the thing for me, being that I'm very analytical, sometimes in churches, I know as pastors, we like to use that term faith loosely and just do it by faith every Sunday, every week. Uh, but d the data is important to me, being in business as long as I have been. So I have a unique advantage that differs from some pastors. Uh, I'm actually involved in that world. Um, and so I understood the infrastructure and what you guys was doing. I have my own team that does that for one of my my company. So I understood it. I just needed someone who specifically understood the language of church and understood yeah. uh, what we were about. Uh, so it wasn't just about running an ad. No, I, I need you to understand psychologically the demographics, the, uh, uh, the, the, the intel that's necessary to reach a person for them to even want to come to church. And so for me, once I started seeing that people are coming through the doors of the church, you know, I'm looking at the numbers saying, okay, we, we, we're averaging about $14 and some change every time someone clicks a button. And my objective is, what can I do to drastically increase and maximize the ROI on that 14 bucks? Because we're a growing church. We don't have money that we just throw out of a window. Yeah. Every little bit, uh, we, we, we actually released our faith in doing this. So I wanted to make sure that the people knew that we were going to steward the resources and their sacrifice as well. So the system we put in place, which as you mentioned earlier, is the concierge system, which we noticed in putting that in place, it drastically improved improved our show up rate. So it's not enough for people, for you guys to do what you need to do in getting them in the room. As the pastor, as the church leader, I needed to put some systems in place to prepare for them when they come. 
Yeah. You, you, you know what I'm saying? And I could see how you can slip into, well, they just going to come, let, let them do what they do. They've put the systems in place. Great. Let it flow. It, it, we just discovered quickly. It, it don't work that way, especially yeah. in business. You need to nurture, you need to touch them. I understand it takes seven touches for someone to decide, to decide whether or not they want to do business with you. I believe it's the same way in the church. They need to see your church at least seven times, even though they may have planned to visit, there need to be some other things in place. So I wanted to draft improve that touch point, which would then increase their confidence to potentially show up on a Sunday. Yeah. Uh, and that's, that's phase three, because there's still work that needs to be done when they show up, because they can show yeah. up in the room and not come back. So we wanted to, we use a term in our church called stickiness. We want to make it as sticky as possible when they sit in the seat. We, yeah. we want them to say, this is what I've been looking for. And make it difficult for them to walk out without saying yes to community. So that's kind of uh, uh, what we have been doing. And we have, uh, at this point, I think we've been working with you guys for uh, last September 2023. We're in uh, April, so we're, what, five months uh, that we've seen God tremendously uh, grow our church. Uh, and uh, I'm happy about it. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. awesome, man. That's awesome. Yeah, you said something there that really stood out to me. You guys are really emphasizing stickiness, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. What can we do to get people to come feel like, oh my gosh, this is what I've been looking for. Mm -hmm. I want to come back again next yeah, week, right? Yeah. Uh, you might call that retention. Mm -hmm, absolutely. So I truly believe that that starts before they walk through the doors absolutely. of your church, yes, right? Yes, what are yes. you doing to set yourself up for success to get people to once they do come, once they do sit in and they hear worship and they hear the message, what are you doing before they walk through the doors of your church to actually like help that process? So walk, walk me through okay. what that's you guys good, have there. That's a good question. First, where I like to always start uh, in any church community, especially if there's a passion doing this, the first thing you want to do is start uh, with mindset. You, you need not only your leadership to buy into this, you need your, 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 your membership to buy in this. So what I started doing, there was a whole series I did before you all clicked the button that said, come. I took four weeks to actually teach on the burden of why new people are necessary in community. Yeah. Uh, and I called it the church, and I did a four-week series on, hey, over the next several weeks, we're going to be seeing an influx of people. We're going to be reaching the city of Collin County for the glory of God. We're making a decision to digitally evangelize this city. This is what it looks like. We're looking for people from all walks of life who are coming from various contexts, various backgrounds. I need them to, 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 to gravitate to that burden. And uh, if you don't have the burden for it, what I tell you to do next doesn't matter because you don't care. And so I, I talked about the three numbers, the 6,000, uh, the 180,000, and then the 2.1 million. Uh, the 6,000, the, the 180,000, and then the 2.1 million, that's, that's the number of people that leave church on a daily, monthly, monthly and annual basis. Wow. So I wanted the church, our congregation, to understand that this is not just my church. This is his church. He gets to bring whoever does, whosoever will let them come. So I first started with the mindset because I wanted them to share the burden with me. I didn't want to be the pastor, to bring in an agency, to do the work, because just honestly speaking, there was somewhat of a bit of a fear because I felt like this process, this system would make our people evangelistically lazy. Yeah. That if since they got an agency coming in place, I can give a little extra to, so to, to, to give towards this, to partner with reaching my city, that means I don't have to ask anybody or invite anybody to church. So I have to deal with the tension of that too. But once I shared the burden, then we moved into the process of what it actually looks like. So I, I looked for someone who had a burden for souls. The Bible says that uh, Jesus sent his disciples out. He says the harvest is right, but the laborers, they are few. So pray to the Lord of harvest that he would send laborers in the vineyard. And so what I first did is I wanted to find someone who had a burden for souls because I needed them to fall in love with this idea, which we did. We found a team, we put them in place. They put a concierge team in place and basically what they did now, church candy has done a tremendous job in putting the, the uh, funnel in place or the automation as you will where a person 
says, hey, I'm coming to this service, and then they instantly get a message, and then a few days before Sunday, they get another message. So they've done a great job in that. But the first few weeks in, I discovered that although I was seeing 30 people plan a visit for the weekend, I was only seeing five or six show up. So uh, the way my mind works is, okay, what can I do to drastically increase that? Uh, and that's where the team came in place. I wanted to find a way to remove any dis-ease uh, from coming to the service that they said they were going to attend. And I discovered that a phone call drastically diminishes the fear of showing up. If I can build a relationship with you before you walk through the doors of my church, I have now gotten a leg up than, than most because you have someone that you've developed a relationship with. And my rule of thumb is you have nine weeks to build a relationship with someone that comes in your church. If they don't build a relationship in nine weeks, they're going to another church down the street. So that's our, that's our, our, our process. Yeah. So I decided on the front end to find a way for them to build a relationship with someone. Hi, my name is, you know, Ken, and uh, I'm, I'm a part of the concierge team here at Connect Church. We noticed you plan to be a part of this weekend experience. We want this experience to be as seamless as possible for you and your family. So first off, can you tell me how many is going to be with your family? I see that you put in the notes here that it's going to be three of you guys. What's your children's name? Yeah. So then... Okay, wow, he wants to know the name of my children. What are their ages? Okay, great, great. Okay, tell me about your family. Is, are you married? What, whatever your situation is, because now that's going to be intel that when you pull up on the parking lot, uh, before you walk through the doors of the church, there's a whole team outside waiting to greet you and say, hey, uh, Ken, we were waiting to meet you, man. Welcome it. And you know the kids by name because the team has done the work to know who they should be looking for. And that removes the barrier of fear uh, and concern of walking through the doors of the church of the, for the first time. And then when they get through the doors of the church, the systems you have in place is critical there as well. You know, where they, do you know where the restroom is? Let's, let's have a cup of coffee. We're going to sit, you're going to, I'm, I'm a part of your concierge team, so I'm going to sit with you this Sunday. So I'll be, just to eliminate the, the fear, I'm not going to put you on the front row because, you know, I'm going to let you sit somewhere comfortably where you can enjoy the experience. But I'm, I want you to know that I'm going to be here every step of the way. When service is over, I'm going to be there again. And I'm going to, hey, what did you think about the service today? Find the children, what they think about the service. You know, just building that relationship and that rapport. And we've discovered that that has increased us where before we were seeing about an 18 to 20 percent show up rate to now nearly double. Wow. Double. Uh, from So once someone plans a visit, I have a very... Um, uh, um, my confidence meter, once they plan, I'm about 80% for sure they're going to show up because yeah. I have the systems in place that, that ensures uh, that it's so sticky that they're going to do everything they need to do to show up on Sunday. This reminds me of, have you ever seen that show, The Bear? Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. So in season two, <laughs> they take, and so for those of you that haven't seen it, um, it, the premise is they're in season two, they're taking a, uh, Chicago, like almost bodega style mm -hmm. sandwich shop. <laughs> that's just like, you would think is just like, Hey, you go in, Hey, what kind of sandwich do you want? Kind of thing. Um, they're taking that basically and turning it into a Michelin star restaurant. Right. And so they take one of the workers to go basically study under this high mm. tier Michelin star restaurant. And he goes in and at first, he's like, what is this? Like, I've been working at a restaurant for years. I know what I'm doing. And he sees the level of excellence wow. that this Michelin yes. star restaurant yes. operates mm -hmm. under, how every single fork they're polishing. <laughs> and he's like, what am I doing spending all this time yes. polishing the fork? He just doesn't it get it. And then he sees the people's faces when the waiters go an extra mile mm -hmm. and they know the people's name. Hey, John, we saw, we were so excited. We saw it was your anniversary. Yeah. We actually saw on your Instagram that you love key lime pie. Yeah. We don't really make key lime pie, but our pie. chef went ahead <laughs> and put together this that's, sport. He that's went what I'm talking above about. Him, they yeah. go above and beyond. And the, the guy is like, oh my gosh, I get it. Mm -hmm. I get it. You're just, you're, you're just taking that level of experience and just making people feel Wow. Absolutely. And, and it sounds like that's kind of what you guys are doing mm -hmm. yes. to where whenever someone plans a visit, they're not just filling out a form 
and getting an automated text mm-hmm. message. That is true. That's uh, true. They're, they're really, it's almost like 10 years ago, guest experience yeah. in, in the church world was huge. Like, hey, mm-hmm. you know, Carrie Newhoff put on mm-hmm. an article, you have seven minutes <laughs> when someone drives up on yes, your sir. campus to make a good first impression because yes, they're going to make a decision whether or not they're coming mm-hmm. back next week, right? And there's a lot of truth in that. But it's almost now like the bar has been set further back mm-hmm. to where like, all right, we got to make a first impression yeah. before they drive up yes, on campus. Sir. Yes, sir. Yes, uh, sir. And, and I love that you guys that you guys have that. Uh, do you guys have like a set script that uh, whenever you have people on the team uh, that, that they go through when they're talking to these? We do. It's very people? simple because what I what we wanted to avoid doing is it feeling somewhat like an interview. Yeah. Uh, we wanted to try to touch, you know, the the top areas of concern, which is going to be children. Um, you know, your church denomination. Where do I park? Uh, what time the service start? Why should I RSVP? What does that matter? Does that yeah. guarantee a seat? You know, we we try to address the areas of great concern immediately so that when they walk through the doors of the church, they at least feel some level of comfort uh, that they know what's going on. Um, and so, yeah, so we do have a script. I even have one that we used for Easter, which, by the way, because of Church Candy now, Alex is dope. Like, that, that's my guy. He's awesome. Okay, man. he's dope. Uh, if you're Blessed with the privilege of having Alex uh, Suber as your 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 account rep, you are blessed. God has highly favored you. Uh, so Alex, <laughs> all of our team members are great. All of they our are. Teams, they're great. You're blessed to just work with Church Candy. Yeah, so, I, but I love Alex. So, uh, so Alex called me the week of Easter, and what I decided to do is because I know I'm a, I'm a we're we're growing church. When we started yeah. with Church can, Candy, we were seeing about 100, 120 people a weekend. Okay, that's that's the real number. We were struggling. To to get to 200 struggling we would see 200 maybe mother's day maybe easters but that was about it so what we decided to do when we we started uh with with church candy we we saw that our attendance doubled literally in 60 to 90 days double uh, which then put the burden because we were doing one service. We're now doing two service having to do three and I'm trying to push that out as as far out as I possibly can, but uh, it's, it's, it's looking that three services have to take sooner, take place sooner than I initially anticipated. Um, so what we decided uh, to do on the onset is we, we wanted to make sure uh, that, that people knew that we cared. Um, and so we put this system in place uh, whereby um, the people knew that they're not just concerned about me just showing up to say I showed up. They really care about me and my family and and what I am about. And so for Easter, which, by the way, was the largest attended service we have seen in our church history. It's awesome. And our church is eight years old. We, we um, when I talk with Alex, he says, hey, yeah, some of the churches, uh, the way the algorithm is working right now, they're just, they're, they're outspending. Uh, and we had like a, you know, a little small budget. I didn't have much, but it wasn't our usual budget. So I said, okay, Alex, well, you do what you do. What we're going to do, we're going to pray. What I'm going to do is I'm going to call every, every plan your visitor that has scheduled a visit over the last 90 days. So wow. we put a team of about 15 people. It was over 600 calls. We made them within a week time frame, the week before Easter. We said, hey, you planned your visit in the past. We know, we don't know if you had a chance to show up, but I want you to know there's a big day that's taking place uh, and it's, it's perfect uh, for first timers, it's Easter Sunday. It's yeah. coming a little bit earlier this year. We want to try to make this experience for you as seamless as possible. You will be amongst friends because there's quite quite naturally going to people be people who are new. I mean, so what we saw was that people started confirming showing up for Easter that may have planned a visit two months before yeah, and didn't show January. up. It's something about that phone call that that. That does something. It's something about getting on the phone, saying, hey, my name is Ken. I'm with Connect Church. You scheduled a visit, planned a visit, and I just want to make sure we have all the pertinent details to ensure that this weekend's experience for you is as seamless as possible. We have found that statement alone, uh, it it goes a very, very long way. So then when they reach, when they get there, and then on Sunday, they they hear this word three times. 
We want to welcome you this morning. We know this for some of you all, this is your first time being a part of Connect Church, but we're believing that by the end of the service today, you're going to leave his family. The worship team says it. The, in the offering, they say it, and I say it at the beginning when I mention in my sermon. What I've done is I've planted the seed in their mind that the, today I'm a guest, but by the end of the service, I'm leaving as family. It's something about that statement that triggers them to say, I need to be a part of this. Yeah. And for 22 weeks since we've been working with Church Candy, we've had someone say yes to Jesus and community every single week week. That is amazing. Not some weeks, not missing one. Every single week, someone says yes to Jesus and yes to community. So a church that was seeing about 150, 180 on a weekend is now well over 600. Man. In just six months. That's, that's. Bro, you're about to bring me to tears. (laughs) And it's, I get so many like comments and stuff on my TikToks like, oh, you're just about the numbers and da, 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 da. But like, yeah, there are vanity numbers, yeah, like yeah, attendance. For sure, for sure, Great, for sure. people show yeah. up. But like, what what about people taking next steps? Yeah. Hearing that people are uh, giving their lives to the mm-hmm, Lord. Mm-hmm. People that are jumping into community. I'm sure you guys have had tons of baptisms and Absolutely. people getting involved in li- yes, your yes. small groups or whatever you guys yes, do there. Yes, like, sir. that's, man, that's, that's yes, incredible. Yes, sir. That's incredible. Uh, well, well, look, a lot of people might be listening to this. Um, and, and they think, man, people don't want to talk on the phone anymore. Like me, I'm, I'm, uh, I turned 26 in a few weeks. Okay. I'm Gen Z. We don't like talking on the phone, <laughs> yeah. man. You're the uh, group I have to spend most of my time with. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so what do you say to that, man? What I would say to that is the, the people that's on the concierge team, believe it or not, are under the age of 30. Yeah. Uh, if you start with the mindset and if you start with the burden, and I have found that many under the age of 30 have the burden to see people uh, experience the experience life-changing power of, of Christ, uh, they just want to know that the why matters. And so for me in our church, we, we, we have, matter of fact, I'm going to give this to you, and you're more than welcome to use it or share it with anyone in your staff. But this piece of paper here, uh, we started out with this. Uh, every member, especially if they're a volunteer, they had to go through this process where we asked them this series of questions because we wanted them to know that it's not so much about getting people in the seats. We want you to understand the, 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 the why behind the what. Yeah. Let's not just do. We're not here to say, oh, we got, we're at 600 members now. Oh, God is good. No, we really wanted people to understand that this is important because the 6,000, the, the 180,000, the 2.1 million, that, that matters. That's how many people are leaving the faith annually. So what we decided to do was to make sure that everyone was on board with understanding the overarching mission of the church and the why behind the church. If you get enough people to buy into the legitimacy of why the church exists, they'll they'll go to the ends of the earth for you. Yeah. So what I discovered is once I spent more time explaining why this is important and and how many people are leaving the church in droves specifically in that demographic between 18 and 29 uh they're no longer coming to church because my mama said go they're yeah. they they they're now making a, a decision and they're asking those hard questions so we decided to slow down take who we had and get them to buy into what we were hoping to move into with church candy. And that became an, it, so when I began to ask them, Hey, will you be a part of the concierge team? It was, it, it was without question. Yes, I'm down where you need me. I can get, and I would just say, Hey, I've got a special for Easter. I did it just, just this way. Hey, I've got a special project uh, that I want to know if you can lend me about three hours of your time with this week. Today is Monday. I really need this task to be done by Thursday. And I want to know uh, if you're willing to be a part of the team that can help me make this happen by Thursday. Respond yes if you can. No, if not, if you are interested, I'll send you a link to Zoom and you can join me tonight on the Zoom link and we'll talk more about it. I ended up with over 20 people on that Zoom call. That's awesome. Uh, And what I was able to do is take that list and split it up amongst that group of people. And they reached out to every person by phone. They were given a database with all of the FAQs, with the scripts, 
specific prayers. Yeah. So we targeted certain prayers, maybe dealing with divorce, maybe dealing with grief, maybe dealing with financial calamity, maybe dealing with this spiritual apathy. You're dealing with a struggle and, and just feeling, feeling spiritually sluggish. Maybe you're hurt because of church community. So what we've done is created this document that the person that's taking, making the call, can you, you don't have to be Billy Graham. It's, it's yeah. as simple as right there, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this individual who has decided to plan their visit. Lord, we just pray that you touch this specific area in their life. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah. So what I did is I removed the barrier and the burden of feeling like you needed to be this super evangelist or this pseudo super spiritual person to be able to witness and evangelize by phone. And I discovered that when I was able to do that, I was able to get more people to buy into it. Many churches, we ask people to do things, but we don't give them uh, the proper systems to help them succeed in whatever the task we're asking them. And I discovered that the systems help mitigate and minimize minimize any uh, challenge with someone who may be volunteering for the first time. Yeah. And that has been our secret weapon. And I, I have sent tons of people to church can. As a matter of fact, all of my friends that I've sent, I, I know they've got great account reps, but believe it or not, I call them every month. How are we doing with your your, your, your account? What, what what's, what's working? What's not working? Hey, yeah. talk to my young lady. One church, we set a whole meeting and they met with our concierge team. They gave them the script. They gave them everything they needed to do, showed them what they needed to do to drastically improve their show up rate rate and they're seeing the difference with just that one phone call yeah i love it man yeah. i love it uh would you be willing to share your script absolutely some of those things for sure okay, for sure awesome. so that'll for be sure. linked below this training for you for guys sure. definitely take advantage of that um man i love this i love that i feel like we're giving so much value to pastors because i'll be honest from our perspective um this is this can be one of the biggest, biggest mm -hmm. disconnect. Yeah, I think our team does a really good job at getting families to plan mm -hmm. a visit, um, and there's only so much we can do with technology Absolutely. to try to automate that follow up process. But man, there's there's something about just having someone from your church touch base from them, just like if you were to walk through the doors of a church on a Sunday morning. Absolutely, and having someone actually make a genuine connection mm -hmm. and reach out. Same thing here where you guys are reaching out because uh, we've even toyed around with the idea. I know other agencies that have a service where they'll call and follow up with mm -hmm. leads for their clients. And we've talked about, should we do that? But it just feels disingenuous. Mm -hmm. You don't want mm -hmm. my team calling people that are playing events <laughs> to your church. And wanting to, wanting to be at the church. Yeah, and they yeah, show up, yeah, oh, yeah, where's, yeah. where's Alex? Where's yeah, Brady? Yeah. I talked to them on the phone. Yeah. Uh, and they're like, man, yeah, no one named Brady goes to church. church. Yeah, yeah so yeah. I, I love that you you guys set this up. Um, what, would, what would you say to someone that's uh, maybe considering church candy and they're considering jumping in with growing their church using uh, digital marketing? I would say I, I believe it's a good idea. Uh, our new saying right now, it's fair to say we're no longer a secret. That's our new thing now. That's the statement we make every weekend. It's fair to suggest that we're no longer a secret. But what I would like to challenge every pastor, if you decide to do this, understand that that you have to share the burden, that you can't just throw money into it and then not expect to have to do part of the parenting, part of the process. And so we decided if we now for us, we don't have a big budget. And so I'm just talking to that church that may be young like we are. We 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 we, we lease our facility. We're in a storefront building. Uh, we, our our church seats, I think, 170 in the sanctuary. Uh, so we were not a large church, and we're still not a large church. So for us, anything that we do, it matters. And so for me, I just did not want to mismanage the resources that people are giving to help us make this possible. So for me, the team was important. So I would say if you're unwilling to partner and do your part, you're just – you're just throwing money into a pit. You may get some that trickle in, uh, but I have seen uh, that we made a decision to partner with Church Candy in that we're going to put the people in, and it don't take many people. A, a team of three is enough. Heck, a team of one or two is enough. Once I put that in place and knew what what uh, I needed to speak to when someone planned the visit, I, I noticed that uh, the process started working and we could see some success. So although I get an email to say, hey, you've gotten this many plan your visits yeah. at this cost per whatever, 
I already know my numbers before I get the email from Alex because when they get there on Sunday, we've got someone under a tent that's looking at a document to say, give me your name again. And they're highlighting saying, great, they showed up. So I know exactly what we are with our investment. So I would just say, I, I believe this is a godsend. You have to believe in digital. I call it digital evangelism. So that's, that's the term I use, digital yeah. evangelism. I guess you got a lot of people that are just not so, so comfortable just yet with sharing their faith and going out and, and just witnessing, you know, not yeah. everybody that's their, their, their lane, but I've discovered with our demographic, they are predominantly online and have social media accounts. Our average attendance age group is between the age of 18 and 35. That's the perfect demographic for Instagram and, and Facebook. So for us, that's, that was our reach. And that's who we see come through the doors of the church. So I would just say be prepared to do your part. If you put the systems in place, follow the processes, check the boxes, Give it, I would say it takes about a four to six, six week period uh, for you to start seeing the traction from what you've done. We started seeing growth the first week, but for us to really see the numbers we were wanting, it took about four to six weeks because just because someone plans a visit today doesn't mean they're coming this week. What they're going to do first is they're going to go and watch you online. So they've planned a visit for a virtual visit. Once they do a virtual visit, then they show up the following Sunday. And we've, we've discovered that that's, that's basically what's been taking place. Yeah. Well, I love it, man. Mm -hmm. I love it. Thank you so much for taking time out of your week of course. Of to course. Uh, come meet me in this awesome podcast studio <laughs> we were in. It. Uh, man, I appreciate it. Of course. Of course. Awesome. Well, guys, Glad thank you so much for watching. How can, uh, if any pastors want to connect with you, what's the best way for them to do that? Uh, they can reach out to me on any social media handle at I am Pastor Ken. That's Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, or they can reach out to me via email at pk at iampastorken.com, pk at iampastorken.com. If you want to get new guests checking out your church because they found you from Facebook and Instagram ads, you can schedule a call with me and the Church Candy team, or we can chat and figure out if this would be a good fit for you guys for us to set up and manage all of this for you. It'll be the link down below in the description, and that's going to do it for the pod today.